Worldwide, more than 760 dead zones, comprising a tenth of the world's oceans, have been found. Now, these are places where the oxygen has been stripped from the water and sea life lost uh, due to the outpouring of fertilizers, sediment, pesticides, and oil spills. Half of the world's greatest living organism, the Great Barrier Reef of Australia, was lost in the last 30 years, and 93% of the remainder has suffered dire effects from human chemical insights. And that includes the CO2 that is causing climate warming, nutrients, pesticides, and sediment in runoff. Tests suggest that the typical modern citizen is a walking contaminated site. The US Centers for Disease Control, for example, conducts a regular survey of 212 industrial chemicals of concern in a sample of about 2,000 Americans. It finds flame retardants in the blood of almost every person it examines. BPA from plastic drink bottles in more than 90% and the non-stick coating uh, chemical PFOA in most individuals. <clears throat> we are all being poisoned by the polluted air we breathe, whether outdoors, indoors, or in our cars. <clears throat> Pardon me. The Environmental Working Group in independent tests found 414 industrial toxins in the blood of people, ranging in age from newborn to grandparents. It found through 232 industrial chemicals, including dioxins, flame retardants, and known carcinogens in the blood of newborn babies and minority ethnic groups who were contaminated while still in the womb. Recent science reports that the first poo that a baby takes after it is born is loaded with microscopic pieces of plastic that is acquired through its mother. Thereafter, the baby continues to shit plastic that it is ingested from its drinking bottles, its blankets, its synthetic clothes and toys. The World Health Organization reports the finding of toxic contaminants in mother's milk in 68 different countries, with the highest levels in India, the Netherlands and Belgium. An American study found traces of rocket fuel in every commercial sample of infant formula it tested. After weaning, the assault continues. <clears throat> Around 4,000 to 6,000 different chemicals, mostly pesticides, preservatives, additives and dyes, are regularly used in the growing, processing and packaging of modern industrial food. And think about walking down those long aisles in the supermarket, all those brightly colored uh, lollies, sweets and things like that, you know, they're all made from oil or coal or something like that. <laughs> a lot of those dyes. Many of these things have not been assessed for their safety, especially in children who are more vulnerable than adults. And nobody, nobody can yet say what their combined effect on human health will be. These effects also are literally cradle to graze, grave. An Australian study shows that even when dead and buried, we give back our accumulated poisons to future generations as they leach out of our tissues into the groundwater. The World Health Organization and UNEP estimate that about 12.6 million people are dying from environmental poisons and 86 million are being disabled every year. That doesn't include several million more cases where chemicals have been implicated in cancers or uncounted lethal cases of heart disease, obesity, or brain disorders. So who now estimates one in four of every death globally is due to chemical exposure in our environment, sometimes acute, but mostly chronic. This far exceeds the annual death tolls from malaria, car crashes, and HIV AIDS. It is the worst case of mass homicide in human history. It is twice as bad as the death toll in World War II. The full impact of this universal chemical suffusion is not clear, but, sufficient, but suspicions are for affirming. 
Medical science is reporting unexplained increases in previously unknown or once rare conditions whose modern upsurge is increasingly being linked by researchers to rising rates of multiple chemical exposure across the entire population. Such conditions include many forms of cancer, diabetes, obesity, child development disorders, reproductive disorders, brain and nervous diseases, multiple chemical sensitivities, chronic fatigue syndrome, heart disease. In 2006, and again in 2004, Harvard professors Philippe Grandjean and Philip Landrigan warned in The Lancet of a silent pandemic of neurotoxicity affecting millions of children worldwide. They noted that over 200 chemicals are known to cause such effects and that, quote, untested chemicals should not be presumed to be safe to brain development and chemicals in existing use and all new chemicals must therefore be tested for de developmental neurotoxicity. Now, they've been warning about this for nigh on 20 years. That nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. We're still poisoning the brains of a generation of young children worldwide. Now, backing up their hypothesis was the finding by the US Centers for Disease Control that one in six American children now suffer a developmental disorder. I'm citing America because that's simply because America has the best data, um, but you can take it as read that other countries around the world uh, have equally grave statistics. Studies in Europe, Asia and North America put the prevalence of autism at one in 100 and as high as one in 59 children in the USA. Several epidemiological studies find that mothers living in industrial areas close to heavy traffic are twice as likely to have an autistic child as those living in healthier places. In a recent report on endocrine disrupting chemicals, the World Health Organization and UNEP warned that reproductive and other hormonal disorders are on the rise globally, that man-made substances are implicated by more and more laboratory studies, and the scale of the problem is probably underestimated. And as somebody who, who reads an awful lot of the scientific literature on this sort of thing, I can tell you those studies are multiplying by the year. There are tens of thousands of studies now linking man-made chemicals uh, with various health conditions. Now, it's a very alarming picture if you put the pieces together, but unfortunately nobody is. Um, sperm counts in Western men have more than halved. Reduced female fertility, adverse pregnancy outcomes, genital deformities, changes in gender and sexual preference are all now thought to have links to man-made chemicals which are scrambling our hormones. The UN warns this. Endocrine disruptors have also been linked in several scientific studies with the worldwide pandemic of obesity. Two vital points emerge. First of all, this chemical assault is quite new. Mostly it has just occurred in the last 50 years. It is something that our ancestors never had to deal with. Second, its impacts are for the most part preventable and avoidable. The question is, does society wish to prevent them? Every year, as we heard, about 2,000 new chemicals are being released onto world markets, most without proper health, safety, or environmental screening. Now, regulation has so far banned just 19 out of 350,000 chemicals in a handful of countries. Right? At, at that rate of progress, it's going to take us a third of a million years, which is longer than the entire existence of Homo sapiens uh, to, to process all the chemicals that we're producing at the moment. Clearly, national regulation holds few answers to what is now an out of control global problem. Furthermore, the chemical industry is relocating out of the developed world where it is generally quite well regulated and observe some ethical standards, and into developing countries, mainly in Asia, where it is largely beyond the reach of the law. 
and I might add, where officialdom is readily corrupted. However, its toxic emissions are returning to citizens in well-regulated countries, in wind, water, food, wildlife, consumer goods, industrial products, and people. So even if you've got really good laws, they don't protect you, not from this flood of, of, of toxins, which is on the wind and in trade and things like that. Furthermore, the chemicals that we emit, intentionally or unintentionally, then go on to interact with tens of thousands of other compounds in our environment and daily intake to potentially form billions of toxic mix mixtures. The effects of these mixtures are very poorly understood at the moment. Science is really only just starting out to understand what happens when you hit somebody with 10,000 different substances. And these mixtures cannot be controlled by regulation. Mm -hmm.